All my life, I've been perfectly average. The average height, the average weight, below average grades. Now I have an average family, an average home, and an average salary. I'm perfectly average. And I don't know about you, but to me, that can make me feel limited. That can make me feel restricted. That can make me feel pointless. But is that how I was created? Is that how you were created? Let's find out. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. All right guys, today I wanna share a very special video with you and in order to do so, I actually wanna read a short portion out of one of my daughter's favorite books. Now, if you don't know much about me, I am happily married to my high school sweetheart. Her name is Jessica and she is amazing. And two years ago, coming up the 26th of this month, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl that we named London Lily. And now London is the light of our lives. She is this amazing little girl and she loves books. And if you're, if you don't know who these guys are, I have to ask if you're even Christian. I mean, come on, everyone knows Veggie Tales, right? Well, she got this very cool little book we picked up at the store for her and she absolutely loves it. And I love to read it to her. Now the book is called God Made You Special. God made you special, but it, I want to tell you just a little bit of background before I read this little portion of the book. But with my daughter, we try to always provide positive encouragement that Jessica and I, we are both youth pastors. That is what we do full time as we work with teenagers and we absolutely love it. It is our calling. It is what God has asked us to do and we do it delightfully. But we see a very common trait. None of us think that we're worth very much, right? We always think that there's someone prettier, that we could be skinnier, that we could be richer, that our face could be shaped better. You know, we always think that we need to be improved on. So every day we try to get down with our daughter and we try to have her repeat after us because she's starting to say words and understand meanings. We say, London say, I am pretty. I am beautiful. I am smart. I am strong. And we try to, Add, add this positive reinforcement so that she knows as she grows older that no, she doesn't have to be on America's Next Top Model. No, she doesn't have to look like that. She doesn't have to dress like that. She doesn't have to be like that because God made her special. And so when we found this book and, and just reading through the first couple pages, we thought, wow, this is, this is what we want her to know. This is the information that she needs. This is, if she remembers nothing else, I want her to remember that God made her special. And I wanted to share that with you today because I think for so many of us, we believe this about ourselves, that we need to be skinnier, that we need to be buffer, that we, we need to have that jawline, or we need to have that six pack, or you know, we need to look like that other person. And so often we hate the traits that make us ourselves because they're what separates us from everyone else. However, that may be the very part of us that God made special. All right, so let me read this just this short section to you because I think this book is incredible. And if you, you find it anywhere, you should buy it even as an adult. It's called God Made You Special and just recite it to yourself each day. The book goes like this. God made the heavens and the sea, the fish in the oceans, the birds and the bees. He grew all the plants, put fruit on the trees. He made everything. He even made me. He picked out my smile, my eyes and my nose. He was very particular from my head down to my toes. I'm just what he wanted and I think it really shows that he's really created and all of heaven knows. He thought it all over. He made me just right. I make him happy. I am his delight. When I look in the mirror, I see his touch because God made me special and he loves me very much. Sometimes I feel down. Sometimes I feel blue. Don't like something about me. It's sad, but it's true. But then I'm reminded that God had a plan. He wants me to be just the way that I am. And that's just something we want 
her to remember. And as you could probably tell, I was doing the motions we have her do. You know, he loves me from my eyes, my nose, my mouth, you know, he loves me from my head to my toes. We never do little motions with us, but we always want her to be reminded that she's not average. She's not ordinary. She's not a dime a dozen. No, she's one in three billion. That God created her uniquely. That God thought it all over. And I want you to know that today. That maybe you feel like that you need to change something about yourself, that you need to lose some weight, that you need to put on all that makeup, or that you need to do this or you need to do that so that you can look like that other person, so that you can be beautiful. Well, I want you to know, ladies, that you are beautiful. Men, you are created the way that God intended. That your appearance, that thing that you probably dislike the most about yourself is probably that one thing that God created to make you unique. Because typically, we dislike the things that make us unique. Because we dislike the things that separate us from our idea of perfection. And our idea of perfection is what we see on a TV screen. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, that is not God's idea of perfection. You are God's idea of perfection. Now, sure, we mess up and we sin. I'm not saying that is perfect. I'm saying that the way that we are created, our physical body, the way that God made us look, sound, and act, that is God's idea of perfection. Actually, it says in Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5 that God formed us in our mother's womb. Before you were born, He set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That before you were born, God can crafted you. Isaiah says in 64 and 8 that we are the clay and that God is the potter. And in Ephesians 2.10, it says we are his workmanship or his masterpiece. Not just another painting on the wall. No, we are the masterpiece. We are that framed piece of canvas that hangs in the dining room where everyone will see. We are the masterpiece. Not just another painting to sit in the racks. We are that painting that is framed and hung up and placed on the wall for the world to see. We are his masterpiece. We are God's workmanship. Remember that next time you think you're average or you're ordinary or you're ugly or you're any of those things that you say about yourself or you feel like the world is saying about you, say that, no, you are wrong, world. Satan, the words you are trying to put into my brain, the feelings you're trying to put in my heart, you are wrong. You see, I am God's masterpiece. God has my picture on his fridge. He's telling his angels, his friends about me. I am his masterpiece. He created me special. I'm not a dime a dozen, I'm one in three billion. That God created me perfectly. He intricately wove my cells together to form me to be who I am today. And whatever the world tries to tell you and tries to enter into your heart and into your head, it is wrong. God created you special, just the way that you are. I see so many teens trying to be someone else. I see so many people trying to act or to look or to dress like someone else. When in reality, God created you to be who you are. I see so many ladies trying to cake on makeup to look like that famous person on television. Well, you should know that that famous person doesn't even look like that famous person at home. That it's all a lie. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with makeup. I'm just saying, don't try to cover up who you are. Because God created you to be who you are. Ephesians 2.10 goes on to say, For we are his workmanship or we are his masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. The one of my favorite verses that I often hear quoted is Jeremiah 29, 11. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now I'll admit, Jeremiah 29, 11 often gets misquoted, 
but I do believe that those plans are still accurate for us. I do believe that God created each and every one of us for a purpose. I believe that God created each and every one of us for a good work, that God has a plan for our future. One of my favorite scriptures is Romans 8, 28, and it says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, that we know that all things will work together for the good of those who love God. Not all things will be good. However, all things will work together for good. I believe that we have been called for a purpose. I believe we've all been created uniquely and on purpose. You see, too often this world tries to tell us that we are simply an accident that we came about on pure accident. We have no purpose, we have no reason. Basically, we are here to live and to die, but I'm here to tell you that God has a purpose, that God has a calling, that God has a reason you're on this earth, that you were created on purpose and for a purpose, that you have been given gifts, talents, and abilities that make you unique for a purpose. You see, because in 1 Peter 4 and 10, it says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God speaks through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever Amen. You see, you were created on purpose and for a purpose. You see, God created you special. He created you. He intricately wove your cells and your DNA to form you into the person that you are today for a purpose and on purpose. You are not an accident. You were created by God, the creator of the universe, for a purpose. You have been given gifts, talents, and abilities for a purpose. You have a reason. You have a purpose. I pray today that you would go to God, that you would go to his wonderful, amazing word, and that you would go to him in prayer, and you would go to him in meditation, and you would ask God to reveal to you your purpose. Because you have a purpose. You have a calling. I pray that you'll ask God to find out what that purpose and what that calling is. And remember, no matter what you think, no matter how pretty that other person is, remember that God made you special, that he picked out your smile, that he picked out your eyes, he picked out your nose, that you make him happy. You are his delight. All right, guys, just wanted to add in before I close, I will link to this book uh, in the show notes. Um, so if you want to pick this up for yourself or for your kid, you can do that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you go and hit that subscribe button. I release content just like this every single week, and I do a shorter version every single Tuesday. All right, guys, keep living that bold life.